The Class 365 and 465 networkers are high-performance electric multiple unit trains equipped with disc brakes and the very latest wheel slide protection system. The three-step Wesco disc brake provides high braking rates throughout the speed range and is superior to the old tread brake, particularly at high speed. What you say may be true on a good dry rail, but what about the autumn, when the leaves are falling? Well, in low adhesion conditions, both the old tread brake and the disc brake will tend to pick the wheels up, as you know. The difference is in the character of the disc brake. Firstly, because it's a more powerful brake at high speed, if the rail condition is bad, it'll tend to slide more easily. Secondly, whereas the tread brake, with its cast iron blocks, scrubs the tyres clean, the brake pads bearing on the discs don't. In that case, why fit trains with disc brakes at all? Because the disc brake is generally superior. It gives higher and more consistent braking rates than the tread brake, is much more effective at high speed and doesn't fade when hot. To run a modern high-speed railway with close headways, the performance of the disc brake is really essential. OK. But why does the disc brake have these superior characteristics? Let's look at how the disc brake actually works. Large steel discs are mounted on each wheel centre. A caliper holding two brake pads is positioned so that when air pressure is admitted to the brake cylinder, the brake pads grip the disc. The pads themselves are made of friction material and have a tread pattern like a car tyre. This tread pattern allows the pad to maintain complete contact with the disc when the brake is applied and also disperses any water on the disc surface. All this adds up to a brake which has a much more effective friction surface and is much better at dissipating heat. The tread brake, usually with cast iron brake blocks, has a less effective friction surface, gets very hot when applied and has a much greater tendency to fade at high braking rates. However, because the cast iron blocks bear onto the wheel tyres, they do help to clean any contamination from the tyre surface. So what you're really saying is that although the disc is a much better brake in normal conditions, it can be less effective than the tread brake when very poor rail conditions exist. No, not at all. In very low adhesion conditions, the braking curve of the disc brake can be very extended, but it still equals that of the tread brake in the same conditions. It's only because the performance of the disc brake in normal rail conditions is so much better than the tread brake that it seems poor by comparison when things are slippery. But the real issue here is defensive driving. Defensive driving? <laughs> what do you mean by that? I mean understanding the conditions that cause low rail adhesion, like the autumn leaf fall, light rain or misty conditions and knowing the locations where problems are commonly encountered in stopping. Before you take charge of your train, look at the prevailing weather conditions and give thought to how the train should be handled. For example, it's because so many car drivers don't think about weather conditions and don't adapt their driving that so many tragic accidents happen on our motorways. Exactly the same thing applies on the railway. Look at the conditions Think about how it will affect train handling, then adapt your driving technique accordingly. For the first time, known areas where low adhesion occur will be listed in the sectional appendix. There will be other places where problems may occur at random, so again you'll need to rely on your evaluation of the track conditions and adapt your driving technique. Where you encounter low adhesion and have difficulty braking at a location not listed in the sectional appendix, report it to the signalman immediately. If you encounter exceptional low adhesion at any location, whether listed or not, report it immediately. There are certain giveaways to worsening rail conditions. If the train slips at starting, you know you can expect braking problems. Knowing where to expect poor rail conditions at certain times of the year is really part of your essential route knowledge. Many difficult locations, like Ainsford, are very well known. And you'll hear other drivers talking about the places that are known low adhesion areas. So defensive driving really means driving cautiously if I think the rail is going to be slippery. OK, I've got no problem with that. But what about keeping time? Am I going to get somebody breathing down my neck, demanding to know why I've lost time? 
The most important element of our performance is safety. If running hard to keep time results in a station overrun, or, worse still, a spad, the effect on our customers is a thousand times more serious than the loss of a few minutes. The real message is this. If you know or expect rail conditions to be poor, approach all stopping places more slowly than you would normally. Apply the brake earlier and lighter. The best way to deal with wheel slide problems is not to get into a wheel slide in the first place. Easier said than done. What about the many times we get caught out? I'm talking about hitting a low adhesion patch totally unexpectedly. It's a bit late then to be talking about braking earlier. You're quite right. But how you handle this unexpected situation is very important. React quickly, put the brake controller in step two and leave it there. You've got an increase to step three up your sleeve if you need it. You'll see and hear the WSP activity. Let it get on with the job of making the best of the available adhesion. Whatever you do, don't start fanning or partially releasing the brake. However disconcerting it may seem, the WSP must be left to control the tendency to slide. So now I've lost control of the train. Only in the sense that the WSP can react more quickly than you can, and it knows what's going on over the entire length of the train. As soon as the slide is overcome, you can take full control again. The WSP works the same as ABS on a car. As soon as any wheel set starts to slide, dump valves partially release the air on that brake cylinder to get the axle rotating again. The response is instantaneous, and each individual wheel set gets the maximum brake the rail adhesion will sustain. Yeah, but the WSP can't improve the adhesion level on the rail, can it? No. All it can do is make the best use of the adhesion that's available. So what happens when the WSP is doing its best to control a slide, but I'm running out of stopping distance? This is the most dangerous of situations, and one you should try to avoid getting into. If you do get into this situation, put the brake controller straight into emergency and leave it there until the train has stopped. Don't hesitate. Most, if not all, spads and station overruns are caused by excessive approach speed. Think about the likely rail conditions and if you are the slightest bit doubtful about braking performance, slow down your approach to all stopping places. The real art of driving the networker is staying in control, whatever the conditions. Try to avoid provoking WSP activity. That way you will stay in complete control. If you do hit an unexpected area of low rail adhesion, report it to the signalman immediately. That way other drivers can be forewarned and avoid getting into similar difficulties. So the real message here is to anticipate poor rail conditions, make slower approaches and avoid any WSP activity, if possible. Absolutely right. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. The driver of this networker is handling the train like he always does. He's making a fast approach to the station ahead, and at his usual braking point, he makes a step two application. In normal dry rail conditions, this would be fine, but look at the weather. It's just started to drizzle after a long, hot and dry spell. He's surprised when WSP activity starts almost immediately, but he shouldn't be. If he'd given some thought to the prevailing weather conditions, he'd have anticipated this situation. Now that WSP activity has started, he makes another blunder. He starts fanning the brake in an attempt to control the slide. Now the WSP is confused, and the stopping distance is further extended. He's not going to stop at this station, at least not with the entire train in the platform. So now he makes an emergency application. It's too late and the train overruns the platform. Let's go back and try that again. It's just started to drizzle, but this time our driver's thinking. He shuts off power and selects a light step one brake application well in advance of his usual braking point. The train is now nicely under control. There's no WSP activity. He has no difficulty in stopping smoothly at the four-car mark. All this was achieved by simply appreciating the weather conditions, thinking about the likely rail condition and acting accordingly.
I must say I found this discussion useful. It's pinpointed a number of issues which have caused confusion and unease in the past. The real art of handling the networker is to stay in control all of the time, and the way to stay in control is to think about the conditions and adapt your driving technique. Knowing locations where rail conditions are regularly poor at certain times of the year is really an essential part of our route knowledge. The WSP is designed to minimise stopping distances if you do get into a wheel slide. When this happens, trust the WSP to control the slide as effectively as possible. Don't start fanning the brake. It'll only make matters worse. If you get into the dangerous position of insufficient braking distance, make an immediate emergency brake application. If you encounter exceptionally low adhesion conditions, let the signalman know immediately. Forewarned is forearmed.